I'm hungry. I'll write jokes for food. I, I wish a philanthropist YouTuber would just give me 10K and not film it. Hey, hey, what the hell happened to you? Mr. Beast, that's what happened to me. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I was gonna be somebody. I was gonna be this. Uh, Kyle said my job. Kyle said my job. It's the worst production I've ever made me do. Oh, oh, Welcome back to my corner of the internet, guys. I am the Lucid Dream, and I really was not going to make another video on this topic. Uh, my opinion of the situation is still that the Mr. Beast Corporation is probably too big for any of this to have any kind of measurable or long-lasting impact. However, the Dog Pack 404 video that was released this evening has complicated things a little bit. Um, there are some things in there that are very disturbing. But what I find incredibly interesting is YouTube seems to be actively removing views. Now, YouTube will do this when they think the views are not genuine, when they are bots, but it seems to be excessive. So it actually does appear that YouTube might be intervening when it comes to Mr. Beast. They seem to be actively protecting him. And it's strange not that I think that YouTube is above doing that, but by doing so, they seem to be giving more credibility to this than it would have had otherwise. First and foremost, as always, thank you to all of my channel members and subscribers. If you are new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It won't cost you a thing. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, content cop from Timu back at it again. So just before I get into my interrogation with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle, uh, a lot has happened since my last video. Uh, after posting, I got hundreds of messages from former Mr. Beast employees, um, and I had them all like send proof of former employment. You know, just people showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know fake videos or unsafe practices, uh, you know, toxic workplace stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really going to get into those claims because for one, like. Most people want to stay anonymous, which I understand. And also, like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with, you know, the news coming out about Beast Games and everything. And also, I have, like, more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with part two, you know, like a, like this is Kids Bop, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? Um, so I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten dozens of messages from former Mr. Beast employees of, of uh, very serious allegations. So I just want to put a call to action in this, at the start of this video that, you know, if you have a story, you can DM me. Just uh, make sure you send uh, proof of employment first because I get a lot of DMs. Uh, and like, as much as I meme and joke around, like I take anonymity very seriously. So without explicit permission, I don't go public with anything. And obviously if it goes to court, I don't, I would hope they would censor your information from the court documents, I don't know. Uh, oh, and former contestants too. That's another thing I heard after posting my last video is uh, during the 100 boys versus girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You, know, you you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and, and then you try to f them. Okay, that, <laughs> <laughs> that seems really dark. Though. No, no, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. Because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the thing right. is, is she's not gonna say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. Anyway, so... That will be part three, so, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations. So anyway, my interview with Jake Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and 2020. And also, what people don't know is that he came back in 2021 to be the sole contestant of a Mr. Beast video, which never got uploaded because it went very badly. Uh, he also knows about another, um, portable document format 
who, who was working at Mr. Beast while, while actually on the registry. Uh, and, and I'll get more into that story at the end of the video. Uh, so I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep, just drank a bunch of caffeine. And, and I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So it's mostly just him talking. Also like final thing, people said my last video started slow. This video also starts slow. It, it, it you know, it builds up over time, but I'll do the retention thing and say, uh, the ending will blow your mind. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jake Weddle, everybody. I'm Jake Weddle. Uh, most people who, uh, if, if you know me from Mr. Beast, I'm, I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos, uh, uh, sometimes maybe purposefully kept to the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time. Uh, but I've, I've been in some videos, I've worked on a lot of them. Uh, I was there from 2019 to 2020, 2021-ish when I came back and did some more. I was there when they were authentic and then I saw the transition to what I feel like is a company. He's like a TV show now. It went from, it went from YouTuber guy with a camera to, uh, Amazon. The culture around there was very unspoken, but there was a vibe. There was half the people who, if you made Jimmy happy, you were on the good half. And these people got random bonuses and uh, were usually moved up, had more screen time. Uh, and then there was people who, if you had a disagreement or butt heads with Jimmy or just he didn't like it, you know, you were the other half. And uh, I consistently was in the half that Jimmy did. Jimmy doesn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, that's just so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to get more popular or have more of a a way out necessarily. Like, oh, I'm doing my Twitch thing on the side. Don't do that because you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively. Uh, and I could tell that the yes men were, you know, doing well. And uh, I was, you know, disgruntled uh, for quite some time. <laughs> so I've talked to reporters, right? Like publicly. And I've always had to choose my words very, very carefully because I don't want to say anything I don't stand behind, obviously. So I used to talk to people. I used to glaze Jimmy publicly for things I do genuinely think are true. Uh, but then it's like, well, how come you didn't talk about the working conditions? Well, I wanted a career. I didn't want to, you know, speak ill of YouTube's golden boy and then I'm blacklisted forever. I, I, I tell people I was talking to you and they go, don't, what are you doing? You're going to kill your career. It's like, I have to or I'll be sad. Uh, if this is the moment, we're going to talk about it. So uh, as far as that, uh, that's my covering up of why we didn't talk about XYZ sooner. But now you know. This is a part of the video that really does impress me because he's being honest. You know, he didn't come forward earlier, but he's coming forward now. And he's honest about why he wanted a career, which I think the majority of us could very much relate to and understand. What, what would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there? The fakest video that I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved to. This is like, <laughs> admitting to my complicity. I was a writer there and we were working on a video, uh, Crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title. Okay, I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where, unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddle's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing this. Weddle and Marcus are probably shocked. They had no idea. And so that was the one and only time I had to, huh, my car? What? And on the fly, I saw him, uh, cause Marcus was in that video. So Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was, he was he genuinely had no idea. But uh, so Marcus is calling his mom and his mom's freaking out. And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna call my mom next. So I had to text my mom who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, now I'm texting my mom, I go, I go, mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. And then I hit send and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> And I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my, on the fly, she goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom, my car has been um, destroyed. Wait, what? <laughs> a meteor hit it. Jesus, I'm on vacation, do you understand? Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that video and they're supposed to give me 10K to put a down payment on a uh, new car. And they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10K was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car because I work at Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't get anything I couldn't afford the taxes on. I couldn't get anything I couldn't afford the insurance on. Um, so I, I do my part of the video and I get a mom van that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I, what do you, I can't afford that, bro. Come on, what are you talking about? You know, if I was working on a TV show in the 90s on a show that was a quarter as successful, I could retire today. Mm -hmm. But now I make dog should pay uh, making gajillionaires 
more money. And uh, I just walked into the writer's room. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I left, was because I just walked in there uh, and asked for not necessarily a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing, given how much revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that, and I talked about the Writers Guild, and how this is what Writers Guild Industry Standard is for the streaming internet content with ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube, and I didn't even bring up residuals, because, oh my god, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, boy, howdy, I could retire. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, the, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid. And uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job, and uh, well, I'm some 20-year-old fucking white guy, why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And uh, one of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the V stuff shook out was... Fuck <sighs> that. I feel really guilty about the way it just like, shook out. Um, yeah, I was talking to this other writer, like, it's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is, and I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more, you know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat, he, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat, he's just, just I, I like my job, I like, you know, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know, you get a little something, you don't want to lose it, so he didn't want to rock the boat. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like, if that's, like, yeah, I, you know, I trust you. And he, he stood with me. He went in that writer's room. He went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew... If I knew he was going to lose his job, too, I wouldn't have done it. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're going to give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the, with the you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day? You know, I, I get to go, go home and you get, you're going to pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he, was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? And I really, regret, I really regret that. But, you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe he was feeling better? Honestly, best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> now that he's uh, very, very far removed from all this crazy shit, I guess. Do you think Jimmy really enjoys doing good and helping people? I think Jimmy wants to be the best YouTuber. I think he is laser focused on one goal. Um, and I think whatever he has to do to achieve that goal, he'll do. And I think it was the smartest decision for him that he calculated because he's very good with numbers. If I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I donate to, if I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? But I've always thought if you're going to do something nice for somebody and you stick a camera in their face while you do it, that you didn't do a nice thing for somebody. You, you gained something. You, there was a homeless guy on the street and you saw an opportunity for yourself and your image. And you gave one guy $10,000 who needed it to eat. And now the revenue you ge generated from that video is way more than what you gave. I think when he's generous on camera, it's the least authentic thing in the world. There, there, there's an element of, you know, Oh, hey, you're crying. That's so good for camera. You know, I'm so glad he's... If you're crying because you're so thankful that you got XYZ, and then you go, oh, that's so, I'm so glad he needed it that bad so I could come in and... Oh, can, you, can you cry more? Oh, it's so good for the camera if you could... Oh, it, just, it, it made me uncomfortable that I was working there, and I didn't like it, and I vocalized it sometimes, and I think that's why I wasn't on camera as much as they said I was going to be. Uh, I was told at one point that I was going to be like fourth banana, you know, it was going to be Jimmy, Chris, Chandler, me, you know, and then that never happened. I remember talking about that, like, hey, I thought my contract said X, Y, Z, uh, and then I got the severance checks, so, you know, whatever, all that regard. <laughs>
So after your severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right. So, so in videos where I was uh, appearing in later, that, that's why you keep nice publicly. If, you, if you're nice in public, hey, Jake was nice in public. Let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I, I, was, I was hoping they call back, you know? And uh, I, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was a, a, a three days in a maximum security prison. Uh, if I did do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with a with the rates, and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I was in. I got I got paid a lot for, but it didn't uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it didn't it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There there was a video um, that came out probably like a year ago, something like that. It was it was the uh, it got a lot of hot water when it came out. It was the, uh, the like surviving like a ten thousand dollars every day you survive in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was just, it was one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, "What? You shouldn't do that." And people don't know that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me, and it, uh, it didn't go well. I was already I was already planning on uh, moving to New York, and I had worked at a couple of YouTube companies after Beast, and I had a little bit of change in my pocket. You know, the most change I had in my pocket ever. You know, small potatoes, you know, compared to Beast bullshit. But you know, I thought I had enough to to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, I get a call uh, from somebody over there, and they go, "Hey, they want you for a video." I was like, "Oh, amazing, great, cool, thank God." Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, they, what's the video? And they tell me the print, the pitch. And they, they, they try to make the pitch sound like it's going to be like a walk in the park. Uh, the pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement. Uh, but don't worry, like you only have to last like 30. We have like a video. And they're pitching it like a, oh, it's, at first it's going to be like a luxury vacation. You're going to have like a hot tub and your ice cream machine. And like part of the video is going to be you deciding like, what, what, what items am I going to get rid of, you know, today? And it's like the choice. They were like, uh, it's only going to be bad for maybe the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first, it's going to be like a breeze for most of it. And uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're going to get $300,000 because it's $10,000 a day. And I don't know, man. I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, excuse me, you, I'll, I'll dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face, sure. They were like, you're going to be locked in this room and we got to make sure you're on all the time. We're going to have cameras on you all the time and you're perfect for this because you never shut the fuck up. Uh, you know, on, on paper, I was like, okay, I can do this. And, and I was, they always, they always cut me out of the videos. They always, and I was, you know, editors have told me that uh, it's because you have too much of a personality. And so with this video, I thought, this is perfect. It's a video they can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this, if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. That I held my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I tried to do one, one, one last ride. Uh, and uh, I get there. And at first it's fine. And uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know, which that's probably not good. You know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. Uh, it looked good on the visual. It, it looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, it was in one of the studios. The, they had to like get like a separate like tank for, you know, septic stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Like things look, were cool and funny on paper. But when you think about stuff, a hot tub that's not connected to a filtration system, give it three days, it's gonna stink. You know, if there's not a, like a hot water mechanism, so the, the hot tub was a lukewarm tub at best, which I was a silly complaint, but the shower was always cold and you, you're taking like a quick shower and, and I had cameras 24 seven on me and the ice cream machine. Let's talk about that for a second. The ice cream machine has two mugs on bang, and off reeking of smelly dairy mildew. Like, so I got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. Uh, so the, the little things started to build up. You know, there was like a, a, the bug thing wasn't like terrible, but it was a factor. And like at first it was fine, you know, and you're, you're, you're playing it up. Like, cause you know, it's a video. And it got to a point where like, they weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like have like nighttime hours? You know, and they said, no. 
because it would fuck up the time lapse shots. The time lapse of what? Me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a, a it's like, oh, you're gonna get X Y Z hours of sunlight. Oh, great! Why well, don't know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it. <laughs> you know, I did, one of the things was you got to take away your clock, so you didn't know what time it was. Okay, I got no access to the sun. I got no access to the clock. I don't know, like, the, the the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I I could not sleep, and I I have insomnia problems now. Um, it, but I, I they might have started there. I had good people looking out for me. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we gotta stop. So I, I, um, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people, I wish the lights would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, my, my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh good. <laughs> 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin, you know, it's not helping, you know, and then, and then Jimmy would come in like every other day for like an hour, you know, to check in on me cause he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just the, the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off. This is the note I got from the director from Jimmy uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? To pretend to make it genuine? I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You just be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources and the other one does, and they, they hold it over your head, and you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agreed to it. So I know there are going to be people out there who are going to say, well, he agreed to it. Um, he shouldn't be complaining, et cetera, uh, just because it's the internet and they're going to. However, what he's describing is the exact same power dynamic that people who have been victims of sexual harassment uh, go through every day. So even though this is not sexual harassment, it is the same power dynamic. He is someone who grew up without a lot of money. He is desperately trying to make himself a, a place in the world. He is trying to forward his career. And along comes someone who has the power to make that happen. There's a lot that you will consent to that you don't necessarily want to do. And that's kind of the situation that I am I'm hearing from him. And you can very obviously tell he's not okay. Like whatever happened to him mentally, this man is not okay. I needed it, of course. There's something about like having the cameras on me all the time. Like I was, I was, I was not having a good time, but we were filming a video, so I was trying my best to be funny. You know, I'm, I got, I'm a dark comic. You know, I got, I got bits about. I had a very traumatic life. Uh, I have my, 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 my dad is in jail for sexual assault of a minor. You know, so this kind of stuff is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't fuck around with this shit. Yeah, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You know, I, I joke about it because you know that's what you do in a traumatic experience. You know, I. Of abusive relationships that I get out of it. The first thing I do is I, I do a type eye about it, you know? So I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse, but we're filming. So I'm doing bits. <laughs> I'm talking to the camera <laughs> and I'm being, you know, like, Hey, it's been a couple days. I'm not doing so hot, you know, which if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera. But it, it was, it was too real. <laughs> if they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse footage for 10 seconds? Did you uh, try to get out? Yes! I was starting to calculate, um, oh, I don't know if I could do 30. 
uh, uh, how much uh, can I, well, how, how can I manage to get out of here sooner uh, and still have a video and still uh, have some cash and um, get the plug, man. I, I just, I just, I did. Since we're doing time-lapse shots and since they insisted on time-lapse shots, I said, all right, we're going to do time-lapse shots, bet. I put my, I put my YouTube on, on with the whiteboard they gave me. And I was like, all right, yeah, scrub, go ahead and scrub that footage. You know, you got that whiteboard. Oh, oh, no, either that goes in or this footage is unusable. And then, you know, James Warren came in and erased it. You know, fucking, you know don't, don't put that, don't, hey, we can torture him. Don't you dare let him get a plug in there, you know? Uh, so, uh, it, like, we were playing up the joke, you know? It's like, oh, I'm the boy in the cage, you know, whatever. Like, I'll play into a joke, whatever, it's fine. It's just something weird about when Jimmy jokes. I have jokes about my dad because I love jokes with my dad. I'll joke with my dad all the time. I guess piece of shit. Hey, my dad. Uh, but I have friends that make fun of my dad. That's fine, because I know their intent. I know where they're coming from. When Jimmy joked with my dad, and I sometimes see weird. I don't like it. We <laughs> were doing that one of those hide and seek videos. Again, you know, at the time, they were a lot realer. Uh, so I got caught. And when you get caught, you know, you go to the, you go to, you go to the place where you get caught. And uh, I, I don't know if there's footage of this. I don't know if, you know, I, don't, I definitely didn't make the final cut. Uh, but he, he says to me, uh, all right, you're going to jail. You know, like your dad. And like, it's a joke. But when my, my friends do it, it's fine. And, and Jimmy just wasn't my friend. He was my boss. And that wasn't cool. And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim. And I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. And I got these cameras on me all the time. And I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me, saying, you good, bud? And I was like, yeah, why? You're clearly unwell. Uh, and he goes, uh, well, because the footage you're sending in is haunting. Because <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, but I am mentally decaying, so I'm doing bits. Someone said there is a horror cut uh, of a video in this. And I'm thinking, like, who's watching this? Like, who, who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in a year. Um, Jimmy comes in and uh, I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in, he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? And he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. And I go, what's the challenge today? He goes, you're going to, you're going to run a marathon. You're going to do the two, 22.6 K, whatever it is. And you're going to do it on that treadmill over there. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube. And I'm, I'm, I'm dyslexic. I'm dumb. I don't, I don't have to do a Rubik's Cube. Uh, so it was your first challenge Rubik's Cube. I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. I was like, on camera, I don't, I don't want to do it. He goes, just do it for the thing. Like, kid, you know? Yeah. Like, th th there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in-house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know he's good. We know he's I couldn't say no to the to treadmill thing. Yeah. So I, I, I... People who run marathons train forever, and it's still hard. Again, writer. Do I look like I run? I don't run, you know? Let alone a marathon, let alone that train for it. So I was in a sunlightless, you know. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing and based on all the other stuff, like they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? You, you, you know? And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, Oh, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to get the boost and I wanted the cash. And so I start running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks and I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. I got off the treadmill. Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe. It's all over, just these big red. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like, just the lactic acid. I, I, 
I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And that's when, um, yeah, uh, get psych in and I talk to the psych about how I'm, uh, not well. And, uh, like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that was saying, you got to pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work. And uh, they, they would tell me, they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows you over there. Everybody loves you. They go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I don't love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like at least seven more days? I, no, no. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make sure, you know, everything was fine. So I just, you know, slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> and uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it. Uh, <laughs> they brought in all the people I liked. And Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. Damn. But Jimmy had his like... He was sitting in the chair turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God. Everyone was looking at me and he was like Lex Luthor over there. And he turns around. He stands up. Oh, and he, did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video and he's... um. He's like, oh, stop, you're gonna make me cry. And he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not, he's just. I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says, uh, you. As, as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh, yeah, you know, your mental health's the most important thing. You know, just wanna make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is. I can almost hear. The words Sue come out of his mouth. The S, he just, he just stopped right before it got out. I, I did not get the 300K. What I got, he goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for XYZ days. You did XYZ challenges. So you got, you know, 100,000, some change, you know, give or take. You know how much money I spent in taxes in, a, in, a, uh, in 2021? I spent $44,000 in taxes alone. And now I spent all that money on doing stand-up. I just, I bought plane tickets to go do comedy festivals. You know, my family back home, I gave them a bunch of stuff that they needed. And I uh, haven't been back uh, on a beast set in any official capacity or unofficial capacity uh, since then. And then uh, they did the video with somebody else and they worked out the kinks. And then uh, I'd still gotten some hot water and I knew it would. And I've wanted to say a lot of this for a long, long, long time. And I feel good though. I just had to get that out there. So I just wanna hop in here and show some text that Jake sent me after this interview. This is July 29, 2021, a few days after he got out of uh, solitary. How are you feeling after a few days? Better. I still couldn't sleep even a few days out, but I almost have my sleep cycle back on track. My legs and joints are good, but the blisters on my feet still hurt to walk on. Medical advice I got was not to lance them and just let them go away with time. I'm mentally still in an uneasy place, but I've gotten back on better help. My therapist is a little concerned, but we are working on things. Mind you, this is not supposed to be a traumatic life event. This is supposed to be a uh, Mr. Beast video. Hey Jake, hope you're doing okay. Meg and I just wanted to check in on you. Hey, I'm good and I appreciate that. I'm not exactly 100%. I feel like mentally I'm still recovering a bit, but back in therapy and my therapist is concerned. Haha, -ha, but my legs and joints feel better. Like I can walk, but my feet are still covered on those blisters and those hurt to walk on. But I was told the best thing to do is stay off my feet and let them heal. I'm in rally with my family. Also, it'll be like a month before I get the money and they aren't giving me all the money. They're giving me what I won up to that point in the game, which was also a slap in the face, but hey, I'm out, I'm alive. 
therapist who knows and cares about you. The whole thing was so fucked, and honestly, fuck them for not giving you the money. Meg and I are wishing you the best with your recovery, and please feel free to reach out if you need anyone to talk to or need a place to crash in New York. Hope you're doing well, man. That video you uploaded is money. So good. I appreciate. I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kind of in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days, marathon included. I don't know what's wrong with me. Lots of thinking, too much, one might say. Hope they're taking care of you where they can. I mean, I was kind of shocked they didn't pay me for the full 25, 30 days. They paid me what I made up to that point. Like, even when we have to pull the plug for my mental health, the mechanism of the game is still at play. I'm just happy to be out. I still can't walk well, but it hurts less. And like, I'm not famous enough to burn a bridge. So at the end of the day, I'm still Jimmy's bitch. Like if I was Carl and he did that to me, I'd ruin him. And they wanna do it again. That could be your leverage. If the guy breaks down also, two is better than one. Yeah, right. I told them everything they did to me that they can't do again in order to make sure the other person doesn't break down as fast. But like the way the video is meant to function is the problem. It's a bad idea, full stop. It sounds clickbaity, sounds right up Jimmy's alley, but it's morally unethical like on every level. Off camera breaks, lights off at night, visitation, take the marathon out. Marathon is a video in itself. You can't expect someone to exert themselves like that for 45 seconds of content. The challenges really made it feel dehumanizing, felt like a parody of Mr. Beast. I felt like the homeless guy they could exploit. It felt like of Jeff Bezos had a gimp. It felt like if Jeff Bezos had a gimp, Part of me wants the footage burned and part of me thinks that there's a great horror cut in there. LMAO, he was so fake when he came in and said he cared about my mental health. They must have programmed the care about mental health updates. Uh, he said, we also don't want you to, s and I swear to our Lord and Savior, he stopped himself from saying sue. Also, as far as like, he could have said no, he could have left at any time. I wanna show the segment from uh, an internal document at Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called, no does not mean no. Already insane, uh, because it's sort of, it seems to be co-opting the popular anti rape slogan, um, which is a terrible look given the allegations that are gonna be coming out very soon. Uh, it reads, when dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take no at face value. If we need a store to buy everything inside of and you can call the local Dollar Tree and the person that answers says, no, you can't film here, that literally doesn't mean shit. Talk to other employees and see if they are fans or if any have kids that are fans. Try talking to their boss, their boss's boss. Have me DM them on Twitter and try their social team. If all avenues are exhausted and you are left with a no, that doesn't mean don't try the other Dollar Trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules. Basically what I'm trying to convey is what we call pushing through no. Don't stop because one person told you no. Stop when all conceivable options are exhausted. This is one of many tools that when combined dramatically improve your probability of success when producing here. So this part of the video, I don't necessarily see this as problematic. It may seem so on the surface because of the wording but as far as the content, pushing through a no is a very widely used, very well accepted, very common sales tactic. So this is something you're going to hear from sales coaches and sales instructors all over the globe. Pushing through a no just means you are going to take that first no and you're going to continue on like they didn't tell you no. Um, you're going to exhaust every option. So there's nothing in this paragraph that is overly concerning to me. It's just saying, you know, you are going to continue trying. You are not going to take that first no as an answer. So I get the the no does not mean no is concerning wording considering the situation. But as far as this context, I don't really see an issue here. here. So, so yeah, this idea of like pushing through no's is a big component to, to working at Mr. Beast. Um, and, and, and the way that it manifests itself a lot of the time is like, a director might tell a producer, hey, we need um, access to 30 acres of farmland by Tuesday or we lose half a million dollars. Now, if you're the producer, you obviously know that means get it done or you lose your job. So, so what can happen is like a producer's calling up farmers saying, hey, I need to use your land. And the farmer might be like, okay, but you know, I have animals, you can't be making really loud noises, no pyrotechnics, and you gotta clean everything up. So the producer is sort of incentivized to lie and say, or maybe the producer doesn't even actually know the total contents of the video, right? Things changed last second. So they're very like, they're financially incentivized to be manipulative and sort of, they're put in positions where it's like, 
oh, it's either the producer's job or a civilian's job, like where it talks about, hey, maybe the manager would be willing to bend the rules. Well, you shouldn't really be pressuring civilians to bend the rules that could get them fired, you know? I'll show you a real life example. This is unused evidence from um, part one. I had seen this Reddit post uh, titled, Mr. Beast leaving trash behind and debris at film site in Aden, North Carolina. Apparently he left a large boat in a pond as well as debris around the film site in the bottom of the pond weeks and weeks after the agreed time frame. This actually rendered it unsafe for campers and almost delayed the camp's opening date multiple times due to not being able to get in contact with Mr. Beast to get the stuff cleaned up out of the area. Uh, so I actually know that this is from a Mr. Beast video called Protect the Yacht, Keep It. Uh, where at the end of that video, he actually says, and If you're wondering, yes, we did ensure the lake was completely cleaned up after this video. For the love of God, subscribe so we can pass T series. Yes, yeah, so he says at the end of the video that they made sure it was cleaned up. I was actually on site um, for part of this production, I, I was at this camp. So I decided to send an email out to the camp basically saying, hey, I heard these rumors, I'm, I'm investigating a similar incidents. And the camp responded, uh, actually not denying the claims, going on to say, I am sure that there are no perfect film productions just as there are no perfect people. I am grateful for the opportunity that we had to host the production crew and because grace or forgiveness has been offered to me so freely, I will choose to offer the same. So clearly alluding to the fact that there was a wrongdoing on, on, by Mr. Beast's production team. And that's like sort of the thing is, if you're around Greenville, you know these stories of people working with Mr. Beast and it being extremely unprofessional, them not doing what they say but they sort of get by a lot on their, their good public image. And, and like, I mean, this camp offered to, to host them completely for free. And I guarantee like if you went to the, the lake at the camp and you, and you went magnet fishing, like you, you'd find all sorts of debris that's still there to this day. Like they, they didn't clean it all up. So in the case of Jake Weddle, like I'm sure that there were producers who were in a position of, hey, if Jake gets out early, we don't have a video and your job is at risk. So there's a tremendous amount of pressure on top of like, him being delirious from not sleeping and, and everything to, to just manipulate him to, into staying. Which, which, you know, I'm sure this isn't like technically against the Geneva Convention on torture because he wasn't technically a prisoner. Like he could have left at any time, but because of the extreme pressure to stay in, it's not really a reasonable expectation that he could have just, you know, walked out. Because of the implication. I think Jimmy is a awkward kid who maybe yeah, had it a little rough growing up. I can't speak on that, but I do have empathy for it. Uh, Cause I you know, had it rough growing up. And I think when you're hyper fixated on something, like I, I love stand up, he loves YouTube, everyone you know, fixates on a thing, you know. I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad. And because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior, if you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say, you know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good, but reap reward. And I think Jimmy just did what the industry and maybe what the system that we have set up demanded. And he didn't care who got hurt. And I think Jimmy surrounded himself with really, really not so great people. And that those people were the ones making the decisions. And I want to say really important. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who are damn good at their jobs. Like when Jimmy comes in and asks for something impossible, it's these people's jobs to do it. And they, it sh they shouldn't be able to make it happen, and they do. And so, I don't think people wanted to talk about stuff because I didn't want my friends to lose their jobs. I don't care about my fucking job. I'll buy in the hole. I don't care. But I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You know? I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know? But uh, just let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was, uh, this, this was like a swim coach, uh, your neighborhood swim team. Everybody, everybody loved him. Everybody loved him. Behind closed doors, he's a real piece of shit. And so, when stuff starts hitting the fan, what? Him? No. Surely. And then, you know, everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know. But then the news broke, you know, that 
he did what he did to one of the students of the team. And it's like when that comes out, you're not surprised, you know? You just go, well, I want to my dad in the news. I said, oh, you idiots. Like, I was like, no, I was, oh, d- dumbass, God damn it. Uh, but I wasn't surprised. And it was just uh, consequences happening to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time. And I don't know, everybody, everybody loves Jimmy. And behind closed doors, he is not super great. And that image is cultivated purposefully and intentionally. And it's branding, it's marketing, it's YouTube. Okay, so I guess, yeah, just one final question on sure. a serious note. Uh, obviously, the Ava Chris Tyson drama. And, um, you know, that's a known issue of traditional media. Uh, did you witness or hear about any uh, sexual misconduct at the company? It's crazy. I, I probably hung out with Ava the most out of the main cast uh, just because uh, I was on Beast Hacks. Uh, now Beast Reacts. I don't know if it's still out. Uh, that was a lot of fun because it was just, you know, being silly and goofy in front of the camera. And uh, Ava was the only person who was willing to film. Everybody else was too busy or didn't want to. And I was just trying to do my job. Sometimes there'd be like an offhanded joke. That's a little gross. I mean, I'm a stand-up, so I'm very desensitized to that. I didn't hear anything that was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like when I saw, the reason I messaged you instead of talking to reporters sweetly like I have been was when I saw the Discord stuff for the, I never, because when I, when I got there, it was like 2019. So I guess if the timelines add up, that would have been like handled for lack of a better term. And then they, and then they started bringing more people on. You know, maybe they thought they had that under the rug, you know? Uh, all right, we handled that. Now let's bring in some writers, you know? Um, and when I saw it, all that stuff started coming out. And the potentiality as of this moment of recording, you know, I know this has been happening fast and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats. Or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me. And if you're going to make fun of my dad. I don't care what happens to me or my career or reputation after this. I had to, I had to say some stuff. So whatever happens, happens at this point. Uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct to the company? I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I, if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things, yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was... Covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew, but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender, on the registry and everything, who worked there. And like, you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it. You can still have a job after you're on the, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing. You know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think there should be read the rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that. And he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos, he'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, 
He's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are a registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender? With a physical mask? Like, do I have to... Is, how, is it more on the nose? Or... <laughs> I, I don't know why they let him go because there's, there's rumors back and forth. You know, so I don't know why they let him go, but he did leave at one point. Even if... That guy didn't do anything. They still knew about it and he was still around. And what if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. It's like, why, 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 do, you, why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware. Don't ask him why. You know? The fuck? And Jimmy knew about it? The likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. All right, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware. Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record uh, off the registry, and that's what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Okay, so Reed is So just from an outside perspective, if you've got someone with a nickname Delaware, you're going to ask, how did you get the nickname Delaware? So I feel like Mr. Beast interacted with this man whatsoever then yeah, he probably knew how he got the nickname. It would be extraordinarily unusual if he had never asked him, why are you called Delaware? Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reed's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't promote gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month, you know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know, but you know, I know that that's, I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with. So I'll just say preemptively, like, you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. Like what, you're not doing background checks. You're not, everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Um, I, I think that needs more of an explanation than just saying, I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need an explanation from you or, or you know, your, your lawyers and, and PR people and representatives and spokespersons and um, on how you could have not known that there was an offender uh, at a high level in your company. And while you're responding to that, why not just respond to the allegations of, of rigging contest videos and selling fake signatures, running illegal lotteries, um, you know, the, the dangerous conditions on the set of Beast Games, you should address those too. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just let us know. Okay, that was my interview with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle. Uh, I, I know he will be coming out with a uh, longer cut of this interview as well as other content. Um, so I just wanted to shout him out, Jake Weddle, top link in the description. I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing. So Jake also released a video, and as of two hours ago, it only has 7,000 views on it. Now, considering the number of people, the number of views on the Dogpack 404 video, and the fact that I actually had to go looking for this thing, 
it does appear that YouTube may also be censoring this one to a degree. It's up now. I'm going to work through the rain, if that's okay. Uh, something I know to be true. Everything I said in the documentary. I was the precursor. I was the test bunny. I wasn't supposed to be. I was supposed to be in a video. I was supposed to be in a video that came out. And I was supposed to get a lot more money than I did, and I wasn't supposed to get hurt. Another thing that's true is uh, there were two other influencers there who saw me. Carl, you know one of them. Carl, somebody who rose to the top at Beast. Interesting. Real quick, another thing I know to be true. I was talking with James Warren, and uh, it was a phone conversation. I don't have any copies of any of the stuff I have there, so maybe they have copies of some stuff, and if they don't, then hey, f f awesome. <laughs> this is one of those on the phone things, so I must have gotten swindled. Whoops. I, I was supposed to be the fourth banana. Supposed to be uh, Jimmy, Chris, Chandler, me. These are conversations I had that uh, I was in the writer's room and I was like, when, when, when do I get uh, some screen time? And I never did uh, because I uh, didn't agree with everything. I didn't like the content. I kind of thought a lot of people were assholes. Not even like a weird like Discord chat way. You know, just like a... Oh, that's a banger, dude. Oh, ba that's a fuck. You know, I mean, that's not my vibe. I don't like eh. backwards hat skateboarding motherfuckers getting a lot of money and being praised like they were geniuses. Uh, but regardless, uh, Carl, uh, one of your friends that you play Among Us with, I forget who, she saw me. She was there. She talked to me. And uh, Eric, I don't know if this made it in the doc. Dude, no, no harm, no foul. And also no harm, no foul to the Carl's friend either. Y you guys are fine. I just would appreciate it if you acknowledge that uh, you were there and you saw me there, that's all. I mean, I, ha I have an image of me there. Here, there I am. I, I, I'd be really crazy for me to fake that. That's a picture of me at a, a set I didn't build. A bunch of really hardworking people that get no credit built that set. Other things I know to be true, a lot of people there thought we should have pu pulled the plug a lot sooner. A lot of people spoke up about getting me out. And I, I know this to be true. I wanted to get out sooner than I was allotted. Uh, they should have the footage, and if they don't, then they don't. A useful idiot told me it is in some servers. All right, now I'm going to talk about some opinions. Uh, the content's not good. It's not good. Content's not good. It's, uh, it's algorithm SEO bullshit. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Dogpack was talking about mind control, and when I was first watching the doc, I was like, oh, what do you, I mean, it's just what commercials do. It's just what advertising does, but yeah, that's, that's also bad. Like, can we think about that? Can we think about how... Advertising and marketing, like there's a lot of tricks that they, they literally trick you into buying stuff and like video games that like with the microtransactions, like that's all, yeah, based on like science targeted to kids and their brains. And our phones are drugs. Like our, our phones are like, like the dopamine, you know, the happy chemicals that go off in your brain when you do like drugs, you know, your phone does that. And, and we give that to kids. If I had a kid, I, I wouldn't let them get a phone until they were like 16. And that's just me. If a phone is a drug, some people give out that drug to children, like candy, like they're dressed up as Willy Wonka or something. I don't know. That's an opinion about algorithms and how they influence content and how the entire YouTube industry has seemed to shape around that. Another opinion I have is that the culture, this isn't a trade secret or anything, you know, but the culture around, you know, some of the places I worked. Yeah, if you didn't kiss the ring, you'd lose your career. And if you didn't talk nice to reporters, you wouldn't be allowed back. You'd be in the out group. And even if you kissed all the rings, you're still in the out group. Because maybe you're just... I don't know. Here's a fun metaphor. I'm a punk band, and I used to write for Taylor Swift. Approachable, inoffensive, formulaic, paint-by-numbers. I was planting seeds, fellas. I had to be very careful about what I said publicly because I wanted to have a career. But I let some seeds drop. I let some seeds drop. Okay, put a finger down if last year you were in a Mr. Beast challenge that never came out, but it's okay because you got paid anyway and you got paid a lot, which is great. But then this year when you try to do your taxes, your taxes were a nightmare. So you try to do them as early as possible. So you try to get your taxes done in February and they're like, yeah, you owe this much and we're going to take it out of your account. And then the money never comes out of your account. <laughs> Do 
Tens of thousands of dollars in taxes and it's more expensive because you just didn't know what you were doing and no one was really helpful? If you want to comb through all the seeds I was dropping, check out my YouTube videos, my TikTok, my Instagram. I deleted my Twitter because I don't want any part of that. Don't worry. All my Call of Duty Xbox Live tweets got deleted back in like 2019. It's fine. I, I got rid of them. I got rid of them. And that brings me to the next thing. If in the hypothetical scenario, somebody were to hire people to dig up dirt on other people for the purpose of defaming them, so they seem less credible, hypothetically, uh, did they offer me $100,000? Yes, indeed. Did I take it? Yes, I did. Uh, was it under the assumption of shush money? No, of course. They would never do that. I was told by the man in charge that this is just payment for the challenge. Because I was in there for 11 days, and I did some challenges, so I got a good chunk of change, and I was told it was because that's what I had completed up to that point. And that is true. If they're doing a deep dive on my financials, I'm broke, fellas. I'll save you the trouble. And it'd be a weird angle for them to go into like a, like a weird, like deviant, like, like drugs and sex thing. But just to get ahead of that, I guess. Sure, I do drugs. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my uh, prescribed medication currently. And am I into a weird sex shit? Yeah, I'm sure. Fucking, <laughs> I'm like a hetero, flexible, polyamorous, he, they ish, Brooklynite. You better believe I've gotten into some stuff. <laughs> Gender's a spectrum and I'm spinning the wheel, baby. At least anybody I'm talking to like can go see Deadpool without their mom, you know? You must be this tall to ride. And by this tall, I mean, ID it has got to be a, like a, way above 18. And if I'm missing anything and other weird bullshit comes up, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to talk about it. I, I got no skeletons I ain't scared to talk about. In fact, I might even make a playlist about it. I'll make a playlist called Skeletons. If something comes my way, I'm going to make a video about it, unless they take it down. I don't know. I don't want this video to be too long. I just wanted to say, uh, I didn't do this for money. I didn't do this for fame. I didn't do this to jumpstart my career. I wasn't trying to be an opportunist. I actually, uh, I held my tongue for a long time because I, I made the calculation that that was the right thing to do based on the information I had. And once I found out some new information, that changed the equation, so... So normally you'd have a lot more commentary out of me, especially for a video this length, but I'll be completely honest, his uh, very obvious suffering is kind of heartbreaking to me. Uh, putting anyone through that kind of psychological torture, especially in a power dynamic like that, is just not okay. This video I find to be a lot more impactful than the first one was. It really, really did hit the mark when it comes to bringing this out of the realm of faking videos and CGI and paid raccoon actors and brought it into reality. So amazing job by Dogpack404. Um, I am a lot more impressed with this video than I was the first. I know he did a lot of research on the first, but I think this one really nailed it. As far as Jake is concerned, I am going to leave his channel in my description box if you are interested. I highly recommend go over, um, show him some love, uh, I wish I could give him a hug because I can see how much pain he's in. Until we find out what happens, I am not going to hold my breath for Mr. Beast responding to this. I don't think he is going to respond at all. Again, um, I don't think of him as an individual person. He really is a corporation and is a corporation. They are probably not going to respond anywhere but in a courtroom. That's just honesty. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what else you would like to see, and I will catch you on the next one.